Uh, this was obviously a larger coordinated effort. Um, we'll, it'll probably require a state and federal uh, investigation. Uh, we need to hold whoever is accountable accountable for it. Our top story tonight, the FBI now investigating a series of school shooter hoax threats across the state of Georgia. That includes one made this morning at Savannah High School. The agency released a new statement just in the past hour saying in part FBI agents across Georgia are working alongside our law enforcement partners in identifying the source of the hoax threats. Law enforcement is going to use all available resources to investigate a school threat. Hoax threats drain law enforcement resources and divert us from responding to an actual crisis. At least a dozen school districts across Georgia also received calls, including schools in Glen and Camden counties. We have team coverage following this for you tonight on this big incident. Our Olivia Weil is live at Savannah High School. Brooke Butler live at school district's headquarters. And we want to start tonight with our Olivia Weil. Olivia, the investigation is now underway as to who exactly made this call. I do want to start by saying the scene at Savannah High right now is very different than this morning. It's dry and it's very peaceful and calm, unlike the situation when a, a we do not know who yet <laughs> called in and said that there is an active shooter. Cops, caution tape, and a hoax. That's what Savannah Chatham County Public Schools Police Chief Terry Enoch calls the reports of an active shooter at Savannah High School Wednesday morning. Everything is, is safe. The school is safe, students are safe, there was no injuries. He says around 9 a.m. a call came in reporting six people had been shot at the high school. That's when the wide scale response began. We followed all safety protocols in that response. Uh, we had an immediate response. As a matter of fact, I was already on the way here. I was one of the first responders myself to go into the building. An hour after the call, district spokeswoman Sheila Blanco did confirm the best case scenario. No active shooter, but she says the scares weren't specific to Savannah. There were similar calls that came in to uh, Glenn County and Wayne County. After an hour of waiting, parents were reunited with their kids. Officers debriefed, but the work isn't finished. Those that have uh, this ill intent that want to disrupt our community and create this kind of anxiety, we're going to hold you accountable. Marvis, I do want to mention that the DA was also on the scene with Enoch. She said they will be working to figure out whoever is behind this. Marvis. Well, Olivia, the district attorney was on scene with the police chief and says they'll be investigating whoever is behind the call. Um, and Olivia, we know this wasn't an isolated incident, so how will this work with the investigation? Riley, the DA says that they will be working with the other counties reports, comparing notes of those incidents because there were several calls around the state. They also will be working with the FBI. So a lot of agencies on top of this case to pinpoint who made in that call earlier this morning. Riley Marvis. All right, Olivia, thanks so much for that report. Yeah, the parents are getting increasingly angry and angry. Parents are about to break the perimeter. Hey, we got students jumping the back fence back here going to their parents, so accountability is going to be out the window. Wow, just some tense moments. You were just listening to dispatch audio from earlier this morning, of course, at Savannah High School, and that's where our Brooke Butler is. She was with some of those parents as they waited to reunite with their children, at least earlier today she was there. She now joins us now live from district headquarters. Brooke, as we just heard, tensions obviously running high. Yeah, Marvis, a lot of parents I spoke to were feeling frustrated. They told me they wish they had received better communication from the school district, but at the end of the day, they were just relieved to be bringing their teens home safe. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was a scary morning for parents, students, and teachers at Savannah High School. I got scared. I got real scared. I never would have thought any of this would have happened. After receiving a report of a gunman at Savannah High, <laughs> Officers placed the school on lockdown and went room to room looking for a shooter or any victims. They just came in the classroom all doing work and stuff and they just told us to put our hands up. Thankfully, no victims were found and the call was deemed a hoax. So I'm glad nobody got hurt. But some parents still felt frustrated. They heard from their own kids about the incident before hearing from the school district. 
If it was an active shooter in there, host or not, prepare us. Prepare us. Prepare us. Prepare us. We should have been better prepared. Not a text message for my child. And several people told WJCL they wish the reunification process would have run smoother. They, they were unorganized. But Savannah Alderwoman Linda Wilder Bryan said Wednesday, in scenarios like this, parents need to listen and comply with officers' orders. We need to let them do their jobs. Despite some parents' frustrations, both officers and the school board feel proud of their response. Today was a good example of all the training and preparation that we've done. All the agencies responded in the most appropriate way to make sure we protect the most valuable resources we have in our community and that's our, our kids. And we are definitely glad everyone's safe. Brooke, both the school board and Pol Savannah police, they'll be meeting to talk about today's response. Yeah, they'll be discussing what went right and what went wrong and what can be approved upon should this ever happen again, which hopefully Marvis, it does not. Back to you. Definitely hoping not. Thank you so much, Brooke.